Hi crafty friends, it's Donna here from Donna is Playing Paper and from Donna Doll 74 on Instagram. I have a Copic coloured card for you today that uses a beautiful stamp from Paper Rose Studio called Lily Bouquet. Have you ever got halfway through making a card and been paralysed by fear of wrecking what you'd already done? That was my experience with this card. But let's get on with making it. First of all, I've stamped my image onto white cardstock using Memento Tuxedo Black ink, which is Copic friendly. I've got a quick sneak peek of the colour palette that I used today, but as I colour through this image, I'm going to write the colours on the screen or show stills of the colours that I used for the different parts of it, in case you want to use similar colours. Whenever I have an image that looks a little bit tricky, I start with the easy stuff, and that's what I've done here today. The petals were what was really scaring me, and so before I tackled those, I've started with some other bits and pieces of the image. It turns out that these bits and pieces required a full-scale Google search by me in order to write the colours on the screen, because although I knew that stamens were somewhere in a flower, my high school science had not carried me through to today, and I needed a bit of a refresher course. I've chosen a set of two leaves here to colour for the camera. One of them is a straight leaf, where I've just put my darker colours in the centre of the image and worked my way out to lighter, and the other leaf sits in the background, and so it's required a little bit more darker shading right where it sits under the other leaf. By adding darker colours here, I've been able to push it back into the background. And once again, the handy dandy zero marker is out and in full use. I don't think I've ever coloured an image and stayed entirely in the lines. I really must work on my focus. Before I coloured this image, I spent quite a bit of time on the internet looking at images of lily flowers and they come in the most amazing, amazing array of colours. So what I'm colouring today is a little bit of a mix of things that I saw on some different lily images. And here are the markers that I used to colour the petals. There's a lot of markers here and you could probably get away with using one of the darks, one of the mids, one of the lights and the yellow for the outside. But having those extra colours just meant that the blending was very smooth and easy to do. One of the things that I noticed when looking at Lily images online was that often they had their colour coming in the centre of each petal. Not the centre of the flower, but halfway out each petal. And I've never coloured petals like that before. And so I thought I'd like to give it a go. Because this is a little bit of an unusual way to colour, I've left one petal in at regular speed and then I'm going to show you a couple of sped up petals before moving on to the background and the card construction. But what I have for you today is a new composition by our resident family composer, those of you who have been following his journey. The fabulous Darcy Lewis Music, who writes the music for this channel, has just been accepted into studying composition at university and in his downtime while waiting for semester to start, he's written another little piece for this channel. And so I hope you really enjoy that while you look at the colouring and we look forward to a lot more music to come. So sit back and relax and enjoy the music.
tricks that really helps to make your colouring look cohesive is to use the same colours in lots of parts of the image. And so when it came to colouring the stems and I wanted really deep rich green, rather than pulling a different green into the mix, I've chosen one of the reds that I used for the petals. So a little bit of red is going to really deepen and richen my green. Before I do that on the actual image, I just wanted to have a little try and work out which red I thought would give me the effect I wanted. And so I bring in a little piece of paper that you'll see me use a few times during the video, just to do a quick check before I do something on the image that I regret later. I used the same layering technique. Unfortunately, my video cut out right in the middle of doing it, but I did manage to get some footage of the underlayering of the green that's going to get pink over the top. Okay, let's put this baby together. This is where the fear cut in. Once I'd coloured the image, I was so scared to do anything else on that white space around it in case I wrecked everything. And so in the end, I decided that I would cut the image out, make a separate background layer, and only put them back together when I was happy with the background. So here's what I did. I've used the Fishnet stencil from Paper Rose Studio, and a pale pink ink called Rosy Cheeks from Simon Says Stamp, and a nice bright yellow. The yellow I've chosen is also from Simon Says Stamp, and it's called Lemonade. It's one of their newer range of inks. I've put the pink in the centre and the yellow on the outside and I've gone backwards and forwards a few times every now and again lifting the stencil to have a look until I was happy with how dark the background was. I wanted that cross hatching pattern definitely visible but I didn't want it to overpower the front image. Once I'd finished with the ink blending I decided on some rich red and gold spatter. I've used Simon Says Stamp Lipstick Red Ink for the red and I've used a gold paint that I have in my stash, one that I bought in Japan when I first arrived here for the gold spatters. And I've linked to something that I think is quite similar in the description below, where you can actually find everything that I've used today linked and pretty much every single thing I've managed to find links in Australia and in the US. I haven't managed to find European links, I'm really sorry. is in two parts and it comes from the All Occasions Sentiments. I've laminated a couple of those pages in gold using just a cheapy laminator. You can see that the coverage is not perfect but I actually quite like the old world effect that that gives with just a little bit of black showing through. What I don't want showing through is the white cardstock so I've used the same Y28 marker that I started the whole colouring process with just to run around the outside of that sentiment so that you can't see white around the sides some gold shimmer cardstock that I have used to back the image and also to back the white sentiment because it got a little bit lost on the image without a backing and I've used foam tape to pop most things up and I've just included a little bit of footage of that last sentiment where I've alternated foam tape and regular glue so that it sits up and down over the image where I've placed it on the card. I'm going to leave you with some pictures of the finished card from a few different angles. I hope that you've enjoyed this and if you're still here, congratulations on staying to the end. It was a little bit longer than my usual videos, but I thought it was worth slowing down to show the colouring. Until next time, I hope that you stay happy and healthy and I look forward to spending time with you again very soon. Bye for now. And here are the markers that I used to cuddle. And here are the, and here are the markers that I used to colour the petals. Mm -hmm.